There was a time when the experts dictated different rules for women's basketball. Women only played half court because some people believed running full court was just too much for women's delicate sensibilities. It wasn't long before women showed how wrong that thinking was. Here's the backstory on women's basketball and how one colorful team helped pave the way for future generations. Harleen Hudson is the perfect player for the Texas Cowgirls. She's still telling wild stories people find hard to believe, but she has the evidence saved on her computer. This is the music we came out to. Now look how, look how energizing that is. I got goosebumps right now. I can, I can see me going around shooting that first layup. They certainly look like Texas cowgirls, but they're not cowgirls. In fact, they're not even from Texas, but it is part of the identity. They were expecting Texas cowgirls, so here we are. Hats, guns, blurls, music, orange blossom spatial. Harleen Hudson Hansen is a former cowgirl. She's from Iowa. The Texas Cowgirls are actually from Rockford, Illinois, one of many professional teams where women prove they play basketball really well, sometimes beating the men. You know, it was kind of tough sometimes on guys. I have one picture of a man sitting on a bench, and I remember I was near him at the time. <laughs> he was like, I'm never going to live this down. My dad set up a, a basket out by the garage for me to practice on. But dad wants Harleen to be a nurse. If you didn't get married right out of high school, you went off to Des Moines or Cedar Rapids and got a job at an insurance company or a telephone company. as late as the 1950s, there aren't many options for women to play basketball after high school. But Harleen Hudson joins the Texas Cowgirls, one of a dozen barnstorming teams in America, teams that travel the country to play exhibitions everywhere from schools to stadiums. They start in the 1930s, but surprisingly, women's basketball has been around a lot longer than that. In 1891, a professor in Springfield, Massachusetts wants a game that his gym class can play on cold or rainy days. Dr. James Naismith invents basketball. A year later, a gym teacher brings it to a women's school nearby, Smith College. But some feel women need different rules. Take a look at the Spalding rule book from the turn of the century. Women are not as team-oriented because they're selfish and basketball could affect women when having children. And that was the thinking for decades. Women like Harleen play half-court basketball in high school. Rules of girls basketball still existed then. Half-court basketball, doctors literally said in gynecologists that you would ruin your female parts if you ran the whole court. So they couldn't play men's real basketball. But that changes with women's professional basketball and the barnstorming teams all have a gimmick. The Redheads, the Ozark Hillbillies, and the Texas Cowgirls, founded by Aaron Hovland's father, Dempsey Hovland, in 1949. He has experience in barnstorming, combining sports and entertainment. Before they were coming to play, he would send a publicity packet out, posters like this to go all over town. He played on a team that was called the House of David. And they all wore beards and long hair. They were vegetarians. They traveled all over the world. The House of David and the Harlem Globetrotters and all of the Barnstorm teams, they were uh, mostly by ethnicity. They had Jewish teams. They had the Hawaiian 50th Staters. They actually played the pre-NBA teams in a tournament in Chicago. Dempsey Hovland finds an investor for his idea for the Texas Cowgirls to play their first exhibition at Chicago Stadium in 1949. So my dad couldn't get all the women there in time. So he called four of his male friends that played for the House of David and they came to Chicago and fully were 
make up and wigged and put sweatpants on to cover their hairy legs. So they went out on the court and they had a brief scrimmage and the guy said fine and they just gave him the original financing for a station wagon, some basketballs and the first uniforms. That's the start of the Texas Cowgirls. They cram into a station wagon and hit the road with very little luggage. It's not glamorous, but it's a chance for them to keep playing basketball and to see America. They play October to April, seven days a week and twice on Sunday, 160 games a year. We were there to put on a show to entertain people. The crowd saw us and they left. Their coach might have got hogtied. We had a crazy ball that at one point in the game we'd throw it in and the guys get it and then they can't dribble it. It was a laugh getter. The whole town would come out. You know, women would be in their Sunday best. There'd be girls, there'd be boys. And the boys that I remember as a child were often upset and angry because the women were beating the men and they didn't like it. And the ego came in there and the men sometimes weren't so nice on the floor to the women either. One of the players who stands out for Aaron Hovland, All-American Florence Holder. It's her mom. This is my mother. How pretty is she? That's her right there with Bob Cousy. She had the biggest crush in the world. You can tell by the way she's looking at him. He taught her how to dribble. A few years after joining the team, Florence Holder and Dempsey Hovland marry in 1955. My father marketed my mother as one of the most beautiful basketball players on the courts. They're the only female team to play before NBA games, and in 1950, they opened for the Harlem Globetrotters. Goose Tatum and Dempsey Hovland meet during World War II. The Texas Cowgirls travel to Alaska, Greece, Morocco, and unlike other teams, Hovland gives equal access to African Americans. Harlene plays seven seasons from 1959 to 1966. She says it teaches her independence and gives her the opportunity to be who she is, an athlete, and maybe a little bit of a ham. I was the queen of hog ties coming from the farm and everything. I knew to get this fella down and I would let out a big yell, I won't do it right here, and start with that rope and go after a guy. Well, of course, the, the yell got the attention of the crowd. I'm chasing this guy. I, I actually tackle him. But my grandkids, and sometimes my own kids, don't believe my stories, but they're true. I think one of my dad's models was uh, big or small, we play them all. He was always had this just this imagination. It was just, it was fun. He wouldn't have done it if it wasn't fun. All while raising seven children who grow up close to the action on the court and in their house. You know, on any given day, it could be metal arc lemon or donkeys in my backyard eating flowers or a stilt walker or Roy Clark or whomever stopping at our house. So we kind of stuck out like a sore thumb, but he always let us know that people were the same and everybody puts their pants on the same and don't embarrass me and just act right. <laughs> Dempsey Hovland dies of an aneurysm in 1979. His legacy, setting the stage to show what women can do on the court and off. He made me believe I could do anything. So I never thought, <clears throat> Because I was a girl, I only had to do girl things. We didn't have an unhappy day. And it's, that's probably why I'm crying. And it's kind of a struggle. <laughs> I talk to my siblings about it. It's like, we really grew up with a happy, happy, happy life. And we were exposed to so many wonderful things. It was like magic. The women don't always walk away in victory, but they do win respect. I'd see little girls crying, you know, and coming up and hugging these women and shaking their hand because they'd never seen anything like that. Now young women have many of the same options as men, youth leagues, college, the WNBA. No more rope tricks or cramped station wagons. People pack the stands just to see them play. If you want to read more about women's basketball, you can read Barnstorming America, stories from the pioneers of women's basketball by John Molina. Coming up on Backstory, one street's incredible contribution and sacrifice to America's freedom.
And an artist shows how her colors tell the story of Abraham Lincoln. 